Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So here we are on the third floor of the dress shop doll house, and this is the office. Now, on the other side of this wall is actually the bedroom area to the dress shop. So today we're creating the door that separates these two rooms. And this process is going to be very convenient because the wall is removable and it's made of foam board, not wood. Now I've already created a template based on the space that I cut out in the foam board, but I do need to cut it out of my wood piece. Now dolls, I did make doors for the other part of the dress shop and those door openings were already pre-cut. And because the wood was kind of thin and kind of splintery, I was concerned about whether it would disrupt the integrity of the wall. So I didn't try to make the doorways bigger. But with this door and the fact that I'm using foam core as my drywall or the partition, I can make the size of the door exactly the way I need it to be. Now I'm just playing around here with the wall. This is the beadboard I created. There is a link in the description for the other video when I did create this beadboard. I haven't installed it or added it to the wall, but I just have it here just to make sure I stay on track with what I'm trying to do for the complete design of this wall. When you're making a doorway or door frame from scratch, you have to be conscious of additional decorative treatments or features you add to your wall, such as beadboard. It's much different than if you were just gonna wallpaper the wall flat because the beadboard is going to add an extra dimension or more centimeters to the actual wall. So you'll have to make allowances for that when you create your door frame. Now dolls, here I am cutting the door out of the wood sheet. Now I'm actually going across the top of the door frame against the grain, which is a best practice to prevent your wood from splintering. Now dolls, if at all possible, use a new blade when you're creating or cutting out something like this but you still may have to go over the wood more than once. Take your time. This is not a time to rush. Always be conscious of your fingers and your hands and use your ruler as your guide. Now I'm here, I'm just checking to see if my measurements were right, whether it fits inside the opening that I've cut into the foam board, and it does. And although it fits very nicely, I am gonna still have to make a few allowances around the perimeter to account for the actual door frame or door jam and then also for the threshold now here i am using my new sandpaper to just um, sand off the edges to make sure they're nice and level before i move on and dolls you want to sand in one direction you see i'm lifting it as i sand you don't want to zigzag it back and forth because you don't want to ruin your nice clean cut your objective is to smooth off the rough edges and leave it alone. Now that I know the door fits and it's nice and smooth inside the opening, I'm going to go ahead and begin to make the panels or the decorative portion of my door. Now, Tiles, when it comes to decorating your door or creating panels, it is totally up to you and your style of your dollhouse. The decorations or the panels on a door really give the room a lot of its mood, so you do want to be conscious depending on the type of feeling you're, you want your room to have. Now, Tiles, I'm using some pre-cut strips. They are actually 1 16th of an inch thick as well, but they're already pre-cut, but you can definitely make these little edges around four for your door panels with popsicle sticks or you can measure them off of a long strip of wood and cut them yourself. Now dolls, although I have my ruler, I am using the measurement of the previous cut, which is not a best practice, but it is what I do. I was satisfied with the height of the door and so I use the measurement of the door to cut all of my borders for my door panel. And I did have to sand the bottoms of the rough edges because I snapped them loose rather than cutting them clean through to the other side. But let's not dwell on that, dolls. Let's move on. So here I am adding the borders for my door panels. And the length is good. I'm really pleased with the way these strips look. Now, dolls, although I'm snapping my wood short, I want you to see that I am practicing some of the things that I've learned in counseling for my excess glue use as I apply the Gorilla Wood glue to the door panel surrounds. I'm being very sparing as I add it. I'm smoothing it out. I'm not 
squeezing it out in a big glunky chunk. After applying the glue, I laid it parallel with the other part of the door and made sure it was lined up really well. And I flattened it out a little bit. Now you're definitely going to have to clamp something like this because immediately after it absorbs the glue, it's going to want to curl or bow. Now I keep a lot of little wooden clothespins on hand, but you can use a lot of other things to be clamps, but you definitely just want to be careful that you don't use anything that'll dent or damage your door, unless that's the look you're going for. You just want some things to clamp it to create gentle pressure so they can dry flat. And then I added the piece to the opposite side and clamped them all down. And while they were drying, I started to work on the pieces that will go in the middle or and across the top and bottom of the door. Now it's always best practice to allow all of these different components to dry before you move on to the next part. But yeah, that's not what I do dolls. I started to cut and work on the middle piece, the top piece, and the bottom piece while the other parts were drying. I must admit I was very proud of myself that I didn't handle the door a lot while those clamp sides were drying. I just focused on creating the pieces that went in between. And although I used the pre-cut pieces along the sides, these pieces that I'm putting in the middle are actually popsicle stick remnants. So after allowing the door to be clamped for a while, I finally put a big piece of granite on it to allow it to dry flat and I laid all my little divider pieces on top so I would leave it alone. Now after allowing it to dry overnight, I was ready to go ahead and add my divider pieces for my panels. I did use my Gorilla Wood Glue, which is what I use in all of my wood builds. Always keep your sandpaper handy to make sure your pieces fit in there neatly with no pressure or tension. Now, even though you may measure all the pieces evenly, the fits may be different. So don't get frustrated, fit them in one at a time. But if you find a piece that's not cooperative, don't hesitate, just move on. Now dolls, this is definitely edited video, but each time you finish an area, you wanna clamp it down and allow it ample time to dry before you move on because you want your door to be strong, stable, and solid. Now, although I was very sparing with my wood, when you clamp the wood down, you will get some minor oozing. You wanna make sure you clean up any of that before you allow it to dry. And by now you should be able to feel how firm and rigid your door is because now you have three layers of wood glued together. Now as I went back to my door opening now that I have the borders in because now I can really tell how much I'm going to have to open up that doorway to make it fit inside the actual door frame. So Dallas, I decided to use the same strip wood for my door frame so I needed to add at least 1 16th of an inch around the perimeter of the opening so that the door could fit inside the frame that I'm going to create the pin hinge on. So using my ruler as my guide I cut out roughly a 16th of an inch around the inside of the door opening to give allowance on both sides of the door so I can build a full frame with a threshold and create a pin hinge. And I did the same thing all the way around the door to widen it and give it more height. After I was done cutting all the way around the door, both sides and across the top, I went on to play around my concept or my design for the door frame. I actually think this may be called the door jam, but it's the part the door actually is going to have the hinge on it. After I cut all my pieces, I made sure they fit neatly inside the door opening. Then I was ready to start with the glue. Now that I was confident that everything was right, I went ahead and glued it and just sat the door inside the frame to help it keep its shape. And although I did that, it's quite risky because your door could get stuck inside the frame. So be very careful and conscious about this step. It would be a best practice to either use one, two, three blocks or Legos to keep your door opening square while it's drying. But I played around with the panels to decide how I wanted my door to look because I didn't have a full plan as to what I wanted the door to look like. It was just a feeling I wanted the door to have. So at this point in the video, dolls, I'm just going to allow you to watch me play. And if you're new to my channel, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do until I start playing. And while I'm playing, the ideas come to me. So I want to always encourage you to allow yourself to be free. Don't be so rigid and set. Everything that is at one point was just an idea, simply a picture in somebody's imagination. And they had to play around with the idea until it became a thing. 
So dolls had cut a panel and I was prepared to glue it, but then I realized I would prefer to have it more vertical than horizontal. So that means I needed to shorten my top panels and then I beveled the bottom panel to make it smooth and finished. So I centered all the pieces and I was really glad with the way it turned out. So I glued the pieces to the office side, clamped them, and allowed it to dry. And I decided to leave the bedroom side plain. So now dolls were getting to the fun part. I don't know why, but I always get excited about adding the hinge. Because to me at that point, that really makes it a door. Now I did have to remove my drill bit because that one was too large. Now that's just a simple hand pin drill. And I'm using one of the smallest bits to create the hole for my hinge. Now I did line the door up inside the door jam to make sure it was straight. Now that everything's set, I'm trying it inside the door opening to make sure everything fits well. Now dolls, you may ask, why am I doing all this? I just wanna make sure that my final structure is fitting really nice. I'm just checking it around the door before I put my pin in. I can see how the door is gonna fit from the top, the bottom, all around the sides, how it's gonna fit. And I definitely think you have to take extra care when you're doing things from scratch. It's different than if you were making things from a kit and everything is already pre-decided and pre-measured. Now, dolls, originally I thought I wanted the door to open into the bedroom, but I decided I wanted it to open out toward the wall near the window. So while I was working on making the door open in the right direction, I realized I had to notch out a part of the wood floor to make sure the door jamb could fit in there neatly. Now that I know the fit for the installation is right, it's time for me to add the hinge. Now I do use hinges and actually glue them on some of my furniture, suitcases, and trunks. But for interior doors, I prefer the pin hinge method. And even though I did do a pin hinge on the dress shop doors on the other two floors, I think it really is worth repeating, especially because I did a full door frame in this instance. So I'm just showing you how I decided that this would be the side that I'm going to round off because this is the part that would be where I add the hinge. So I have a large piece of sandpaper where I'm sanding it in a one direction, dragging it to curve off that corner and you want to drag it across the length of the sandpaper until both sides are rounded really neatly where it'll give a smooth passage and freedom of movement for the door after the pin is installed. Now here I am using my pencil to mark the outside of the door jam and the actual door itself. And after I mark both ends with the pencil, I use the pin drill to drill a hole through the door jam on both ends and both ends of the door on the side that I just rounded. Now after I've completed both of my holes, I do do a dry fit with the pins to make sure it'll go all the way in the full distance and I use my locking tweezers to help me control the pin. And after I know that the pin has gone through the full distance of both pieces of wood, I use the unnecessary amount of glue to put through both of the holes to lock the pin inside the door frame. Now you really want to be careful with this step because you don't want the door to be permanently glued to the frame. So be careful with that step. So now that my door is installed inside the frame with the hinge, it's time to actually give the door some life. And when I say give it some life, I mean give it some history, make it look like it's been there a while. Now, although this is a renovation inside the dress shop, I want the door to look as though it's an old door that's been salvaged to complete this renovation project, not a new door. Now, although I was very sparing with my glue usage, I do have some areas where the glue oozed out a little bit and left light spots around the panels. So I did do some additional sanding to give the door wear and tear, but I'm also going to add my alcohol and acrylic paint wash to enhance the aging and shadowing of the door. Now I'm really going to concentrate these efforts on those areas that are lighter and glue stained and even some of the areas that I sanded for distressing purposes. And after I focused on the areas that I was really trying to camouflage, I went over the whole door with a really light coating of it and rubbed it in areas that I wanted to be more intense with the aging and shadowing. And I'm really pleased with the way it turned out, dolls. So now I have one more step to be my final touch to finishing my door. So I had two brass doorknobs and I had to age them a little bit with my antique gold rubbing buff. 
Now I did apply it with a brush and then I went over the whole thing with the acrylic paint and alcohol wash. And although I did paint the doorknob itself black, I did it a little scuffy so it would look old and worn. So dolls, here's the completed door installed into the door opening. I think it looks really good. You can see here I've added the wallpaper and the beadboard to the room and the door opens and swings really nicely and smoothly. Now while it's drying, I do have my one, two, three blocks and my piece of granite to just make sure that the door frame stays flush with the bottom of the wall. Now here's my wall, everything is dry. The whole wall, including the installed door is ready to be put into the house. You see my door opens and moves really freely in the door opening. So I'm really happy, dolls. I'm really, really proud of this and the way it turned out. Now let's go look at it in the house. And there is the wall installed between the office and the bedroom. And you see the door swings nicely. That's how the door looks on the bedroom side. And I am really tickled about it, dolls. I really, really am. So let's look at it on the bedroom side. And here is the door from the bedroom side. You can see the panels that are going to show from the side where the office is. The beadboard is on. And you can see the door jam is really neat down where the floor is and I just wanted you to see at this angle how I finished it around the door frame. So you see that the men of the community have been busy and diligent about finishing up the third floor of the dress shop for the ladies so that they can go ahead and fully move in to their newly renovated space. Now if you want to see more content like this go ahead and subscribe. And let me know in the comments. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers and even those of you who haven't subscribed but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.